they came before Columbus, but many other scholars uh, who came after Dr. Isaac Mansura. So when we sing, we should sing with enthusiasm. This land is my land, this land is your land, from California to the New York Island, from the Wimble Waters to the Boston Waters. This land was made to end me. If you don't believe it, what are you doing here? <laughs> that this land was made for me and you and me. Allah brought you and me here for a purpose. But we don't want to acknowledge the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's called insanity. For lack of a better word. So that's the first part of our education, civic education. It was indeed a great pleasure to hear our uh, teacher teaching the children the name of the states. Because every American child learned the names of the 50 states that he stayed used to. I gave the child a, ge a, a geography quiz recently, and boy, I can bear witness the schools are in crisis. But when most of us go over 40, I won't say how far over 40 I am, <laughs> but when most of us go over 40, we're going to school, every child learned the names of the states, the names of the state capitals, the names of the rivers. So the Susquehanna, the Allegheny, the Ohio, the Missouri, the Mississippi, the Delaware, the Connecticut, all of these rivers, these are things that have been broken in the dark. I asked a student in seventh grade, last week in fact, to name your river that only flows through the New England states. Obviously the Connecticut River. Good name it. Uh -oh. Name your river that is west of the Mississippi and flows into the Mississippi at St. Louis, Missouri. And with emphasis on Missouri. <laughs> St. Louis, Missouri. You could name it, the Missouri River. Maybe a, a river that flows north for a significant part of this course and also flows into the Mississippi River but from the east. He's from Turkey, he's excused. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Ohio River. And then I added, wait, I flew in, I flew in. And it forms the, the northern border of Kentucky for good measure. Oh. But there was a time every American school child knew the facts about their land. So Muslim children should be no exception. We can't tell a Muslim child, this is your land as much as it's anyone else's land, and then not teach them about this land. This is your land. And that's why that song, this land is my land or your land, is significant for us. Because this is our land. And knowing our history, so we have to have a sense of civic consciousness. And when there's a sense of civic consciousness, and it's, it's not being taught, generally speaking, it's being sloganized about. We get slogans about patriotism, but we get fascist politics. We don't get politics conducive to a pluralistic society to go with the slogan that are, are, are so frequently uh, expounded on from the right side of the political spectrum. We get slogans about patriotism, but we don't get truly patriotic politics, because patriotic politics will be politics that work for the greater good, not politics that seek to demonize American uh, Muslims so that certain corporate interests can impose their agenda on the country. That's not patriotism. That's paving the way for a fascist takeover of the state. And, and, and what, was, what was the fascism in the, 
the Nazi Germany variety was wedding the state and corporate interests together. So when we talk about real patriotism, we're talking about instilling in our children, and this should be the job of the entire educational system, not just the Muslim school, or not just Muslims who are going to public schools. Everyone should be learning about the politics that protect the rights of everyone, about the politics that inculcate in the general public a feeling that all of us have a stake in this very unique political project that we call America. A politics that recognizes resistance and that recognizes the dissident voice. This country was formed on dissent. How can a country that was formed on dissent, how can a country that was founded on a struggle between the native people who are dissenting against the imposition of alien and foreign rule. How can a country that was founded on the struggle of African people who are involuntary immigrants, who are resisting the usurpation of their rights and a life in slavery, how can a country that was founded on, a, 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 on the resistance of religious, religiously persecuted people or fleeing the persecution that they were experiencing, experiencing in, their uni, in their European home. How could those three fundamental elements, the native, the African, and the European dissident community come together in one land and that land not be a unique land where resistance against oppressive, unjust authority is inherent to the, flows through the blood of the people. Flows through the blood of the people. How can that not be a unique experience? And how can that not be an experience that enshrines dissent as one of its foundational principles? So brothers and sisters, this is our land, and when we say it's our land, it doesn't mean if we see things wrong, we should not speak out against it. That's part of our American heritage. Patrick Henry, whose granddaughter, great, 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 great granddaughter, is a Muslim. Aisha Gray Henry, who is the, the uh, CEO of Fonz uh, Vitae Muslim Press. Aisha Gray Henry, Patrick Henry's direct granddaughter, is a Muslim. And her, therefore, her American heritage that she inherited from her physical granddaughter and that grandfather. Now that's obviously moronic. That might even be straight up moronic. <laughs> that she inherited from her granddaughter, okay? From her grandfather. And that we, as his spiritual grandchildren, inherited, give me liberty or give me death. <coughs> That's America. Give me liberty or give me death. They kill you. You die a good death. And you can live a good life and you can die a good death. And that's part of our, Amer our Muslim heritage. For our Prophet told us Let him, let her change it with his hand. If he can't, let him speak out against it.